a couple of days ago I made this window hanging for a couple who own a house by the sea and uh, they have a tennis court and invite a lot of their friends over to uh, play and hang out at their house and uh, play tennis together. So I wanted to make them a window hanging that was showing the name of their house, which is Sanmar, and uh, have a bit of coat of arms feel to it that shows their big passion and the way they entertain their friends. So in the next few minutes I'm going to show you how I actually made this window hanging. Now there's always been quite a connection of stained glass with heraldic design, so I wanted to have an inspiration from some of the glass work that actually uses glass painting or glass arrangements to show shields, mottos, family names, things like that, as you can see in this stained glass design here, or for example this completely painted design here where you actually have various shields and subscriptions. So I typically start my designs with a drawing, something freeform, putting out ideas, um, figuring out what I want to do. And in this case, because I was looking at heraldry, I wanted to have something that showed the um, elements of the tennis game as well as the name of the house combined. And so a lot of coats of arms have like crossed swords or something like that. So I was deciding to go with a pair of crossed tennis rackets, something like this. And then also I wanted to have a subscription with the name of the house, so maybe something like a banner. Maybe curving in, a little bit of dynamic here. And then um, probably framing the whole design there. And uh, because glass sometimes gives a little bit more stability when you actually put a real frame around it, maybe even doubling up with something that would contain the design and allow it to be hung in a window. Something like this. And because long strips of glass are sometimes hard to cut, probably subdivided, maybe here, maybe here, with some additional pieces of different colored glass. And then to make that look a little bit more dynamic, to probably go and have a background where I would actually have something like line work to either show the idea that the house is by the beach, so it could be waves, it could be air currents, something like this and then tidy those up in different colors of blue. So that's my basic design, and that's something that gives me an idea to start working now. Um, refining the design, obviously, the line work um, needs to be a little bit more symmetrical, inking it in, and eventually coming up with a cartoon design. So a little bit further along the line, uh, I've actually t inked in a lot of the uh, design that I've done, refined a bunch of things. You can see the design has become more oblong rather than square. The lettering is tidied up. Uh, the other uh, element I really had to pay attention to was we want to make sure that the glass that I have to cut later on is actually in shapes that are conforming to the properties of the glass. So some of the very loose line work has been tidied up and makes sure that it's actually having intersections where I can later on cut and combine the glass without any very sharp or extreme angles. Now color is as important obviously as shapes and lines and so I've been looking through my glass stash and been coming up with a couple of colors that I want to use. So for the um, tennis rackets and the frame, I actually want to go with some streaked, fairly opaque white glass. For the um, lines in the background, I already was thinking about something like air or uh, waves, and so I want different shades of blue, some translucent. 
and I have one darker opalescent against streaked ones, so it's probably going to be a combination of those three. And then to have uh, the colors pop a little bit, I also want some reddish and brown for the tennis racket. And for the um, actual stringing on the rackets, I'm going to go with some clear glass. So this is kind of slightly wavy, so it's see-through, but um, it'll still kind of give the feeling of artistic glass rather than just basic window glass. So if I take those and I actually combine them, and I typically do this on the computer as a kind of mock-up taken from photographs of the glass, I'm going to have a scheme that's going to look something like this. So I'm going to have some reddish brownish highlights in the frame and on the rackets as well. Uh, the banner is going to be white with black lettering on it. And then the background you can see has these different shades of blue, uh, giving a little bit of break up to the different line work. Now, obviously, this little cartoon that I've had is a pretty small size, and this is not feasible to actually do with glass, plus it looked pretty small and insignificant when hung in a window. So as a next step, I need to blow this up into a larger cartoon that I can actually use to get the window uh, to look the size that it needs to be, that I can use to cut the glass as well. So I have blown up my design to what the window size is going to be like. It's much bigger. Um, and the way I do this typically is I calibrate the printer to actually print the design over several pieces of paper in the size that I want and then cut the paper out and basically just glue it together. So um, I'll have a cartoon. They can serve as a reference and each of the pieces are as big as the glass pieces that I'm eventually going to cut. So as a next step, I want to make sure I'll give each of the glass pieces a unique number and color that will allow me to actually uh, go and reference each of the cut pieces and know exactly where it's going to be in the cartoon. It's kind of like cheating at puzzling, where you actually had labels for each of the puzzle pieces so you know exactly how to assemble it afterwards. So I have three shades of blue, red, brown, white, translucent, and uh, basically all I'm going to do is go, for example, W for white, and then this is my first piece, so this is W1, W2, W3, and so on and so forth. So this gives me the numbering of everything and uh, at this point I will have to repeat the whole thing because one cartoon is going to serve me as my puzzle reference. So I'm going to place the glass pieces on this particular pattern to be able to replicate the window. The second one is going to be cut up and is going to serve as models that I can put on the glass, mark the glass and then later on cut according to the lines.
so is the next step I've actually started to assemble the different types of colors by color type so here are my browns here are my clears these are my reds this is white uh, here is my light blue middle blue and dark blue and I can actually start marking out the glass now to show the sizes that later on I need to either cut out or saw out of the glass so for these guys which are actually part of the frame this is pretty easy the strips are all two centimeters broad so i will actually just measure and mark this out the way they are looking and i can subdivide them later on So here we have the final assembly of all of the white pieces that I will need for this window. I've put the numbers over onto the glass pieces so I can identify them and know which place they have on the cartoon. Um, there's a couple of ways like here then around the other pieces and you have to make sure as you put them on the glass that it's possible to either saw around them with enough space or to um, graze the glass and then break it with a pair of pliers and I'm going to show that next. Uh, for the rest of the colors, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take either smaller or larger pieces of glass. Um, you can use leftovers and uh, then basically mark out all of the other colors before I get to cutting the glass and uh, preparing the pieces for assembly. So we're now moving to actually cutting out the glass pieces and um, for that I use two tools for the straighter lines. One of them is a glass scorer. It has a small metal wheel at the top which actually goes and slightly creases the glass as you go over it and then you use a pair of closing pliers. They have a slightly v-shaped profile up here to exert pressure on the glass which will then break according to the score lines. So these are pretty nice and straight for the frame so let's get started with these first. And you can see since I numbered and named the different pieces, I know exactly on which portion of the frame they're going to go. But um, before I do that, I'll actually have to grind them down because right now these glass uh, breaks are very, very sharp. First of all, you can cut yourself pretty badly with them. And second of all, um, once I start foiling the glass to um, pre-assemble, uh, the glue actually will not hold as well on the smooth glass than if it's slightly roughened up. So I'll show that in the next step. A glass piece that's been cut by the method of scoring and breaking will have sharp edges. So as the next step, we'll actually have to go and grind these down using a water grinder. And uh, this will also allow us to shape pieces. You can see some of the breaks uh, kind of have hard edges. 
and we want to make sure they really conform to the shapes that we had in the cartoon. At this point you can see the finished design, all the glass pieces have been cut and ground into shape and assembled on top of the cartoon to actually show what the final window hanging is going to look like. For the next step you want to fasten a self-adhesive copper foil around each piece that you've cut out from the glass. The copper foil basically covers the edges of the glass and it will later on allow the application of lead solder that will fit all the different glass pieces together. So you simply hold the glass against the solder foil, surround the piece on all the edges, cut off the excess, and basically bend the foil around the glass. The adhesive on the foil will make sure that it stays in place but to just kind of give it a tighter fit and to really reinforce the bond you want to rub over all of the edges. Uh, you could use all sorts of different things that don't scratch up the glass. This is a um, half of a wooden clothes pin. And there you have it. You will do this with all the pieces and that would allow you to basically then apply the solder and make sure that the whole window becomes one entity. So we've now foiled all of the glass pieces and assembled them back on the cartoon, ready for soldering. Uh, you can also see that I actually added a little bit of paint, glass paint, this is tracing black, to the tennis rackets as well as to the uh, house name and uh, burned those in in the kilns. So these three glass pieces have been treated in addition to the foiling that we've done for all of the glass pieces. In order to assemble the glass, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put solder around the um, edges of the frame in order to keep all the other glass pieces contained and in their position. To do that, I first need to flux the copper foil. And you can see where I actually add some flux. The copper is getting a little bit brighter. This is going to prepare the surface for the application of the lead solder. If you don't do this, um, the solder will just start to ball up and bead and will not bond with the copper foil. I'm just doing this around the outside now because this is the only areas I'm going to spot solder right now. I'm then taking a regular soldering iron. Uh, this is my lead solder and I start melting the lead solder onto the areas that I want to spot connect. And you can see how it already bonds with the copper file on the glass.
There, this is now giving the frame the stability it needs in order to contain the rest of the glass pieces. I now apply flux to the rest of the copper foil and then solder the whole front of the window hanging before I'm going to flip this over and then also solder the back side. So at this point we have the finished window. Both of the front sides and the back sides have been soldered together. And I've also fastened two loops at the top of the window so it can actually be hung up and uh, be suspended in a normal window. So if we look... This is the finished result.